the electromagnetic spectrum simply shows us the range of frequencies of light that we come across in physics and chemistry. And when we're talking about light or electromagnetic radiation, we can treat it as behaving like a wave and also a particle. And if ever I'm talking about particles of light, we tend to call them photons. Let's first of all consider how we describe light as a wave. So here is a diagram of a wave and you'll notice as I move from left to right, the wave kind of changes shape. We're moving across a spectrum on this wave. There are three important terms we can use to describe a wave. The first one is wavelength. And wavelength is simply the distance between two peaks or two troughs on the wave that I can see in my diagram. On the left side of my wave, you'll notice that the wavelength is very small. And on the right side of the wave, you'll see it gets increasingly bigger. So from left to right, we are seeing an increasing wavelength in my wave. The second term we use to describe a wave is frequency. And frequency is simply the, the number of waves that pass any point per second. So if I have a very small wavelength, I'm going to get lots of waves passing a given point per second. And we describe that as a high frequency. On the right hand side of my wave, where the wavelengths are much bigger, fewer waves will pass a point per second. So we describe that as having a low frequency. The final term we use to describe a wave is energy. And a wave with a high frequency is considered as having high energy and low frequency considered having low energy. So on this wave, the energy is actually increasing from the right hand side across to the left hand side. The electromagnetic spectrum categorizes waves in terms of their wavelength. So here are the common features of the electromagnetic spectrum. We have gamma rays on the left with the highest energy. And then as I move across to the right, I get less and less energy in my waves as I pass through X-rays, ultraviolet. The visible light is the very thin strip in the middle, then onto infrared and radio waves. And the actual wavelengths of these categories are approximately the following. And you can see that we're ranging from very, very small wavelengths in measured in kind of nanometers, right up to waves in hundreds of meters. Let's for a moment focus on that very slim, slim section of the spectrum in the middle, which is the visible light part. And this is the actual, the only section of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can actually see with our eyes as they appear as coloured. Either, either side of the visible light section and the energy is either too high or too low to interact with our eyes. You'll find a diagram something like this in the IB chemistry data booklet so there's no need to memorise all of the different features. Often in IB chemistry we'll talk about light in terms of particles or photons and we can treat these as small packets of light with a specific frequency. Also in the data booklet are two useful equations that allow us to do calculations involving energy, frequency and wavelength. And they're the following. Capital E is energy and should always be converted to joules when you're using this equation. H is Planck's constant, which you can find in the data booklet. And V is frequency in units of seconds to the minus one. In the right hand equation, C is the speed of light, which is given in the data booklet. V, as in the first equation, is frequency. And the last symbol, lambda, is wavelength in units of meters. Although these formulas are useful for understanding the relationship between energy, frequency and wavelength, you'll only need to use them in calculations if you're doing the higher level component of the course. Hopefully this video is of some help.